Hello all, welcome to Smart Classes. In today's class, we will study about the administration in Hyderabad princely state. As I already told you, paper 6 can be divided into 3 sections and each section has 5 different uh, chapters and each topic can be divided into 5 different things and you get uh, 2 questions from each chapter. You need to answer either 1 or 2 questions. That is from each chapter, we can easily frame 10 important questions and study those 10 important questions and write answers to these 10 important questions so that you don't have to get confused in the examination. So. In, in today's class, we will discuss one of the most important questions in the chapter 1 of section 1, which is Salajan 1 reforms. As I already told you, Salajan 1 was appointed as the Prime Minister of Nizam state in 1853 when the state of Nizam, Nizams were, Nizam, Nizam was in a very bad condition and it was in a huge debt. Then the Salajan 1 was appointed by Nizam Naziruddin. Taula, the fourth Nizam, as the Prime Minister. His real name was Turab Ali Khan. And coming to the status of Nizams in the British rule, Nizams were trustworthy friend of British. That is, British, ha British has given complete freedom to Nizams because they trusted Nizams in a large, uh, to a large extent. Nizams has complete control over all the administrative matters except defense foreign and communications except these three matters all the decisions can be taken by the nizam government that is financial matters administrative matters governance taxes etc all these things can be taken care by the nizams and after the british uh, um, the hyderabad state was Converged with the or, the or merged with the government of India, that is Indian country. For the, mer for, for the merger of uh, the Hyderabad state into India, basically the then Indian government has attacked, uh, has made a military attack on the Nizam, uh, on the Hyderabad state or Nizam's fort. This is known as police action. In five days of the military attack, Mir Usman Ali Khan gave up. He is the seventh Nizam of the uh, Hyderabad state. And he finally surrendered to the Indian government. Basically, these Muslims ruled India for six centuries. Initially, Persian was the official language and then Urdu has been made the official language. Now, due, during Salajang 1, Persian was the official language. But Urdu was made the official language by Salajang II in 1884. And then coming to the reforms made by the Salajang I. Administrative reforms of the Salajang I. Initially, for the first step, he has appointed trained and talented people of India in high positions. So that they can come up with different policies and reforms for the welfare of the Hyderabad state and, and make the economic conditions of the Hyderabad princely state better. So initially they have made reforms in the revenue department. This is the most important department in those days because this department was responsible for the collection of land tax and distribution of land. In those days the economies were basically agriculture based. Agriculture based. So they, they mostly depended on the tax collected from land and the health of the farmers. So initially, there were many middlemen, contractors, banks, policemen who, who were highly corrupt. So all these people were eating all the money in, that is collected in the form of taxes and the treasury of the Nizam government was finally empty and there was no money in there. That is why the economy was in a crisis and they had huge debts. Salajang has made a reform in this section by appointing Talukdars and Chilladars. So, and he has given policemen to help them. Basically, uh, each village has been appointed by one person who is responsible for the collection of taxes and depositing in the central treasury. He has also established central treasury in 1855. They, uh, before uh, before having the Jilla system, there was a Subha system. It has been replaced by Jilla Bandi in 1864. 
he has also established customs department in 1864 and he has opened offices for offices for stamp papers dilavandi he has also created secretariat and this secretariat was responsible for the policies made and reforms made and it is it takes care of all the if all the application of the government policies and their implementation implementation and then going to the next slide which gives us the various departments established by sala jang one as a part of reform he initially abolished tax on imports in 1860 and he has also established board of revenue In eighteen sixty four, forest department in eighteen sixty seven, renovated forest postal department in eighteen sixty nine, irrigation department in eighteen seventy eight, public works central inam office surveyor and settlement department in eighteen seventy five. He has also established census department for the counting of the population, census of the population in eighteen eighty. He has basically divided four subas which were present into eighteen jillas. And one not nine taluks, and and these taluks were appointed. Uh, there was a thousand dollar appointment for these taluks, and he is responsible for the collection of taxes. He has also established schools to train revenue surveyors. Ah, uh, surveying uh, surveying for the tax for a farmer was a complicated process which was introduced by Salah Jang. So he has established a school on how to survey and how to distribute the land or how to. levy taxes on the farmers so basically taxes were decided on the basis of distance skills rain living condition etc these things were taken into uh, consideration because uh, if if you take the case of rain uh, there is more rains more rain in certain area very less rain in certain area you have higher crop yield in this area and lower crop yield in this area but both the farmers paying same tax is not justifiable in order to consider this factor he has made rain as a factor in the same way the skills the living conditions of these farmers and the distance of these farmers from the market in order to consider the transport cost so after considering all the factors which are involved in farming the taxes were levied and then he has also laid railway lines in telangana and gulbarga between 1860 and 1878 in order to facilitate the transport of goods and people so he made transportation easier for the people of hyderabad state he has railway lines between telangana and gulbarga he has established medical college in hyderabad in 1844 engineering college 1870 city college 1870 chatter ghat school in 1872 and he has made many reforms regarding the farmers He, he he used to say that if farmers are happy then the state is happy because you get food from the from the farmers you get tax from the farmers and as i already told you uh, the then countries were basically agriculture based right now we we are service based sectors we have service based sectors industrial based sectors manufacturing sectors we have different sectors which are giving us the income taxes etc and our gdp depends on all different factors but in those days agriculture was the major factor which was responsible for the financial conditions of the state so he made sure farmers to be happy if farmers are happy they give us a good crop and if they give, give us a good good crop then the state prospers so basically the first important uh, reform he has made is lands not cultivated or exempted from tax that is if this year there's no rain and i don't want to cultivate the land because i may get losses then i don't have to pay the taxes so this is the major thing which farmers were happy about if poor farmers did not pay taxes the possessions of them were not taken away they were given time or they can pay the taxes whenever they have money but their possessions like land house food that is stored stored grains etc were not taken by the poor farmers they they are they they have been given consideration and then the major and the most important reform he has made was farmer was given the right on the land he cultivated 
where uh, for example i cultivate a uh, two acres of land in my village and uh, then sala jung one has given the right that is he has given the rights uh, on that land to myself i can ha- have the land for myself and i can live in i can uh, give any crop i i can seed any crops or i can cultivate any crops in those lands and then next comes the origin of the issue of mulkis and non mulkis why did this actually enter into picture as i already told you that sala jung one has uh, has taken up and he has bought people uh, talented and intelligent people from all over india who were non locals of hyderabad state these people these people were called non mulkis and the locals were called mulkis mulk means a country as you all know and the mulki is a citizen non mulki is a non local non local and the mulki certificate has been given by the revenue department that is a certificate of a citizenship and nowadays we have aadhar card date of birth certificate or a passport to prove our citizenship in those days also he has introduced a mulki certificate which is a proof of citizenship of hyderabad state and then he had uh, hyderabad state and then uh, and he has also appointed saeed ahmed khan who was one of the former uh, founders of al aligarh university as his secretary this saeed saeed ahmed khan who was in a higher positions has employed muslims from north india in hyderabad uh, through which the population of non mulkis increased in hyderabad and also after the uh, as you all know 1857 sepoy mutiny that is the first war of independence many soldiers were were taken up, were dismissed from their jobs so these soldiers for their jobs came to hyderabad state because hyderabad state was prospering in, in those days and there were many jobs in hyderabad came to hyderabad state and got a jobs in a very good positions so there were many non mulkis or non locals in hyderabad state so because of the presence of non mulkis in hyderabad state there was a cultural difference between the mulkis and the non mulkis a dominance of non mulkis these non mulkis uh, culture was close to british culture as the non mulkis are mostly educated educated they moved with the british community and their culture has been westernized westernized so these non mulkis started uh, uh, using their influence and and the western influence was on the local culture which salajan definitely did not like so he made stringent rules so as to stop the stop the mulkis getting westernized so initially he has stopped non mulkis and distinguished local families from meeting each other in order to meet they need a special permission from the salachang's government and he also banned non mulkis from attending private functions of the royal families as he thought these non mulkis will influence the culture of the locals and then he has laid two con- uh, few conditions on the non mulkis so as to stop them influencing the mulkis he has made them not eligible for titles and lands given in the hyderabad state titles and lands which are given as a gift or a or an inam or a prize for whatever work they have did is given only to locals or mulkis no hereditary pensions or lands after retirement are given to the non mulkis and no police assistance for the non mulki officials whereas mulki officials were given uh, police assistance in order to do their works and important and, and responsible positions of state administration and political affairs only given to the hyderabadi mulkis that is even among locals hyderabadis were given uh, importance in the responsible positions of state administration and political affairs he because he did not want any influence or interference of the non locals in the local state political affairs and salajang also refuses to make urdu as the official language as these non mulkis who came from north india had urdu as their official language and persian has becoming difficult for them to 
understand or work with so they try to make they they urged or they requested salajang to make urdu as the official language for which salajang completely refused muslim officers from north india forced to change this official language the then uh, official language was persian and the ministers appointed to reduce influence of non mulkis basically locals were appointed as the locals from different royal families were appointed as the ministers in order to reduce the influence of non mulkis and these non mulkis had to work under ministers so basically non mulkis were not heads of the government anymore ministers who are mulkis are the heads of the government in 1869 persons from mulki families appointed as ministers and the secretaries of them were non mulkis not uh, not muslims it, it is non mulkis and they and he also established a rule which does not allow britishers to enter the force uh, enter the fort yeah when britishers were not entered the fort uh, were not allowed to enter the fort definitely they'll get angry but salajang has intelligently given a reason for this that is he said if he doesn't if uh, if britishers enter the fort there are there is many there there is danger from many of the uh, british haters that is they can attack on britishers so so in order to protect britishers he is not allowing them to enter the fort this is the reason given by salajang to uh, the britishers in order to uh make them stop entering the fort and he has also given orders to appoint only non mulkis in the government slowly as a, as a, as the mulkis got educated and they were also gaining knowledge he started employing mulkis in the government which was it was not implemented during uh, the time it was passed but it was implemented during afzal ud daula after 14 years of the order passed foundation for no mulki rules was laid in this period in the time of salajang he appointed a committee to select bright students and sent for training in different state because non mulkis were taking the top positions he appointed a committee where the mulki students were trained from different state and they get the job in their own state finally ruling their own state and finally after a lot of reforms and lot of work by the salajang man he was died in 1883 and then his his son was appointed as diwan of the hyderabad state when when his son was appointed diwan of the hyderabad state mir mehboob ali khan minor at that time of his, um, um, uh, my, he who was minor at the time of the death of salajang was the nizam council of uh, regency carried on the administration on his behalf up to 1884 in 1884 mir afzal khan has become 18 years and he was not minor anymore and he can rule the state of hyderabad he has appointed salajang to as nizam uh, as his secretary who was 21 years old and he was also friend of mir mahbub ali khan he has uh, selected for the position on the advice of british resident so basically british resident has advised mir mehboob ali khan to appoint salajang to as the as the diwan of the hyderabad princely state that's it for today these are the salajangs most important reforms and i hope you will study this reforms again not only listening to my classes uh, because you're already on youtube go or go to youtube and and try to learn as much as possible about the reforms of salajan 1 and try to write the answer for this question uh, and just just take the reforms of salajan 1 and write the reasons for the reforms and the reforms made and the causes of the reforms and how how did he solve these causes and how, what are the policies implemented for the after effects of these reforms so 
I expect you to answer all these questions after you listen to this lecture and follow a book and read everything if possible and come back tomorrow. If you have any questions, please do comment. In the next class, we will study about Salogen 2 and the reforms made by him. He also, uh, where employment and civil services rules uh, were framed. As I already told you, Mir Usman Ali Khan was the Mir Usman Ali Khan was the seventh Nizam, Farman of Farman of nineteen nineteen, and the definition of mulkis, which is locals. All these things we'll discuss in the next class. Thank you so much for listening. Signing off. Smart classes.